Hello and welcome to my channel on the hook crochet where we talk about wearable crochet style and today let's talk about what's been on the hook. Well I've been a busy bee this weekend and I have some more things to tell you later in the show but I wanted to start out today by wishing everyone a happy Monday. I hope you had a wonderful weekend and I did. I had lovely weather and it rained some but we weren't worried about that and uh, I'm looking forward to spring coming. It's still a little bit cool here. It's in the 40s at night so it's a little bit chilly but I'm looking forward to spring and summer coming and some spring and summer crochet and I have some ideas that I am working on right now for new patterns coming up so I will tell you more about the newest one maybe in my next video but this video I have um, another one to talk about that I almost finished with so what I want to do is first turn off my phone so it doesn't ding while I'm trying to speak and I'll show you what I have on today I have on the coffee break sweater this will be mentioned later in the show because we have a giveaway that concerns this particular pattern this is a coffee break sweater made with cobblestone yarn by Lion Brand it is out of my Etsy shop I love this sweater it's so comfortable I put it on today with a black tee underneath it it's a black tank top excuse me a black tank top underneath and um, it's very comfortable, made from the cobblestone yarn. It is an acrylic yarn, but it's very, very comfortable, and it's, it's not hot. So here's the back of the sweater. It has a stripe across the back and along the shoulders. I really love this design. It, it has a very horizontal look up here, but it doesn't keep going horizontal, if you know what I mean, like horizontal stripes. I know a lot of y'all don't like horizontal stripes, and I'm really not a big fan either. But I wanted to show you this, and later on in the show, we'll have a giveaway that has to do with this particular sweater. So I wanted to wear this today and kind of give y'all a peek at what we're going to do later on in the show. So uh, those of you who commented on my video last Monday will know what I'm talking about. Now, I want to show you the knit crate that I promised I would unbox today. This is a monthly subscription from a company called Knit, knit Crate. If you're not familiar with Knit Crate, they are a yarn company. They um, produce patterns. They are mostly into the sale of yarn and they sell yarn in a monthly subscription so each month you receive two hanks of the same exact yarn and it's really the yarn that they decide on so they're showing you all different kinds of yarn and that's one reason that i like knit crate not sponsored but the the knit crate that has been ours for the last couple of years uh, has been having some shipping problems and some yarn acquisition problems so I understand that I didn't bail out on them I think they're doing just fine they're doing their very very best and I totally get the COVID what it has done to our businesses our shipping our trucking shipping by air into our businesses here in the United States and also in countries in Europe and other, elsewhere but it's been a very difficult year for businesses and I am not bailing on Knit Crate and if you quit Knit Crate that's fine I, I'm not saying you shouldn't but I just couldn't bring myself to do that and I never really intended to I wrote them and told them that I was behind them no matter what and that I would be glad to stay on their monthly subscription program so um, being that as it may I received a monthly subscription this month and this is for March and their March must be colder than my March I don't know where they're located but for March, they're sending out a 90% alpaca, 10% tinsel yarn, and it's very pretty. It's an Aran weight, which is a number four weight. It's uh, a halo yarn. It has a little bit of, it has alpaca hair <laughs> that uh, is very prevalent on here. And, and sometimes you'll pull a piece and it looks almost human. It's kind of weird. But anyway, uh, it's alpaca hair. Here's one right here. Look, I pulled off that. It looks like a human hair, and it's not mine, I promise. Anyway, I wanted to show you this. This is so soft. Now, this is squishy soft, and if it were wintertime, I might be tempted to order a couple more hanks of this and make a sweater, and I may do that anyway because I really like it. It is not scratchy. It's soft and squishy, and the tinsel must be a nylon. I think I looked that up one time, and it was a nylon product, so tinsel helps your yarn uh, be squishy. It's like nylon in sock yarn it, it makes the yarn very soft and pliable and it snaps back so I really like that this is 150 yards on the hank and 
I'm tempted to buy some more of this. I know I don't need any more yarn. I'm, I'm trying to give away a lot of my yarn, but um, I like to collect really super nice yarns that are unavailable in the big box stores. And just to have them in my stash in case I, I feel like I want to make a nice sweater, um, then I do that. And so if I have a sweater quantity of this particular yarn, I'd be more likely to, to make a sweater. Otherwise, it might be a hat or a beautiful scarf, a very warm cowl, something like that. So I have two hanks of this from my Knit Crate subscription box this month. Um, really like it. I didn't think I would when I opened the box and it was gray. I thought, oh, you know, I just, I don't need any more gray yarn. But it is a very rich, beautiful gray color. And I like it very much. Now, the patterns for this month are not anything that I would ever make. They are arm, arm warmers, leg warmers, and two pairs of socks. Not up Jeannie's alley. Jeannie doesn't make socks. I'm not saying I'll never make a pair of socks, but right now I don't make socks. I don't need any hand warmers, and I certainly don't need any leg warmers. So uh, I may use this next year or may not. More than likely, I won't go and use these patterns because they're not really uh, directed for me, I don't think. Um, and it's getting warm where I live, so I probably would feel foolish making those <laughs> for the summer. And, and I could make them ahead of time, I know that, but what I'm going to do is box this up and put it on my stash wall, and I'll know that these are the newest set of yarns that I have um, from Knit Crate. Sorry, that has got a label on the front of that. I wish they wouldn't do that. Here's a nice box right here. This is the one I use for my photo. But anyway, it's a Knit Crate subscription. I really like it. I'm also in the quarterly subscription for the Malabrigo yarn. Love Malabrigo yarn. Probably my favorite yarn in the whole world because it's an affordable hand dyed yarn. It's very beautiful and I have nothing but high praises for it. Everything I've made from it has been just gorgeous. So that is also a specialty yarn though. It's not something that everybody can afford or that wants to spend the money on. So it just depends on what you want to make. And I don't make fancy sweaters out of fancy yarn every time. Every now and then I'll reach for something that's on my stash wall and it's a very nice hand dyed yarn and I will reach for that and make a sweater from it. But it's not a sweater you couldn't make in any other kind of yarn at all. So I wanted to give you that opening, the box opening for Knit Crate. Love it. I'm not bailing, so that's that. Now here's Crystal again because she wanted to model my newest sweater. And I've had more than one person ask me about this, but Chris, spelled with a K, you know who you are, she kind of said something to me the other day that she had bought this yarn and she was waiting for me to make something from it. And I had a half finished sweater in a bag. So I thought I really need to get that out and work on it. And is, while I was doing that, she was sending me the email. It was very kind of strange. But anyway, I, I wanted to finish this. So I have almost finished this sweater, and I'll be writing the pattern for it in the next week or so, and that should be out on the web uh, on Etsy for maybe next week. I'm not really sure. Uh, don't hold me to that just yet, but I'm hoping to finish it. Um, I have it partially written. But this is made from Date Nights Yarn. This is a yarn from Lion Brand. It's a very beautiful pink yarn. And this one is Morganite. M-O-R-G-A-N-I-T-E. Morganite. And that's the type of a, a, a special jewel, I guess. And it's a beautiful pink color. And I'm not really a pink person, but this really appealed to me. And it also has a beautiful, beautiful bling that's uh, woven in. And if I can, here, I've got the yarn right here and I can show it to you up close and see if I can get that bling to show up. This is, um, oh, I can't see it. Maybe you can see it at home. I don't know. Um, it has bling in it and it's very pretty. Now, because it has the bling, it is not as soft as it could be. It is soft when you do this. Um, it's not quite as soft when you crochet it, but it's very, very nice. I wouldn't have any problem wearing this up against my skin or even with a tank underneath. It's not um, that it's not scratchy, but it is not the softest. It's not like sock yarn or fingering yarn. This is a size four yarn, and it is very, very easy to crochet with. I had no problems at all, and I used a J hook with this. I think it's a six point oh. Here we go. A J hook is a 6.0. It's the brown clover um, I use for a lot of my projects, and I did use that on this particular sweater. I use a different stitch pattern across. Um, 
I made the neck kind of high for me. I, I just wanted it to be high in the front and I did it in a V shape and in the pattern I'll tell you how I got this to be a soft V but it is a V here. It is not a, a wide neckline at all. This is a an up close beautiful pink neck on this. I like it because it's pink. I don't know why. And then I did not add short rows to this because it didn't need any. For some reason, when you make the neck a little bit higher, you don't really need that many short rows in the back. So those are not included in this pattern. I do have it in some of my patterns, but not in this particular pattern. Now, I have finished one sleeve. I have not finished this one, but I have finished this one. And as you'll notice, Crystal is still wearing the stitch markers. <laughs> <laughs> that I used to mark my decreases. So I did decrease a little bit here. I took the sweater out here. It only has right about four inches of ease in this particular sweater. So it came up pretty close under my arm. It didn't hang over too far here. So I added some rows at the top of the sleeve and then I added some finishing rows here and I did do some decreasing which I will describe in the pattern. It's not difficult to do but it did bring the sleeve down uh, otherwise the sleeve would be standing straight out like that and I don't like that look. It makes the sleeve gap and I don't like that. I think it should fit your arm around here where the sleeve ends. It should fit your arm but not too tight but it should cup around your arm like this. See how this is cupping right here at the edge? That means that I've decreased here, and then when I added the edging along the bottom, it just caught that and made it so nice. It's just perfect here at the bottom. So I'll be repeating this on the other side, and see how that stands out there? I should have shown you that to begin with. See how that stands straight out? And how I have uh, caused this to come in a little bit from the decreases so it, it, it lays down a little bit better and looks more professional on your arm rather than sticking straight out like that. I don't, I don't like that look too much. Um, even if you didn't add more rows to it, you would want to decrease that first row and two or three times to get that sleeve down where it was a little bit uh, more uh, close to your arm and you want it to look like it's supposed to fit you. And that's what designing your own fabrics and your own designs will do for you. It'll make your sweaters look very, very professional. Now one thing I did that I probably won't put in the pattern, but every so often there's a treble crochet row and I put this last treble crochet row right here at the top. This is where I broke for the neck and then I added some ne neck edging here but I broke right here at the top of this beautiful treble crochet row and I noticed that it spreads out a little bit because of the neckline and it gives that row a little bit more emphasis right there. And I think that's really pretty. I don't know if you can see that. Maybe you can through. Yes, you can see that white through there. Um, it turned out really nice. I think it turned out really nice. And at the bottom, I think I told you this long ago when I first started working on this sweater. I took the bottom row and I caused it to curl in at the bottom so I wouldn't have to put ribbing at the bottom. And on the inside you can see that, I hope you can, there is a ridge right here that runs along right above the bottom row. There's a ridge and I've caused that ridge to happen and put it on the inside so that that bottom row would curve under and you won't need a ribbing at the bottom or any kind of special edging. I might run one row of single crochet around the bottom because at the bottom I have, of course, there's a seam here and I think just to make this more continuous across the bottom I might do that and I may not. Once I get these um, extra yarn ends sewn in, I might decide not to do anything with the bottom. So that will certainly be an option in the pattern so you can choose to do that or not. So this is my newest version of a summer tea. This is called a date night tea and it's named after the date nights yarn that I made it from. Of course you can make it from any yarn that you like. This is a size 4. You could use a size 3. You can make it out of a fingering weight. It would be very beautiful and it would be very drapey and you could make it more boxy if you want. You can make it much wider across and use the basic pattern to make a design for you. So uh, thank you Crystal. Appreciate you coming over and modeling this beautiful new sweater and I should have this finished and the pattern out hopefully by next week but I have an announcement about next week here in just a couple of minutes. I wanted to take you over to my work table and show you my diamond painting project and a little bit about the type of art that this is based on this particular painting so let's go over to my work table and we'll take a look. 
Here I am at my work table and I want to show you this diamond painting that I've actually finished. Uh, last time we met I showed you this and it was partially done but I want to show you this. This is a finished diamond painting and a little history. This is the word Dala and I often wondered when I was painting this or diamond painting this what this word meant so I looked it up and what Dala is is a type of painting and it is um, also akin to curbits, which is a different kind of painting. It's K-U-R-B-I-T-S, curbits. And this comes uh, originally from an area in Sweden. And I will put a picture um, on one side of this video or another and show you where in Sweden this comes from, this type of painting. But there's a sample also that I'm going to put in the next picture, and that's a sample of Dala painting. And I think what is specific about Dala painting, and I'll draw back here just a little bit, is that the colors are very uh, similar. They're red and blue. And all the paintings that I saw that were uh, considered Dala paintings were done in this red, orange, and blue. So what this artist has done has taken the Dala uh, type of painting and has converted it to a diamond painting and has used the same types of colors. What drew me to this painting was the odd color choices. And I noticed that the leaves were blue, the poppies were red, but the leaves were blue, and the uh, little centers of the flowers are blue, and you know the stems and leaves everywhere there are stems and leaves they're blue and I thought that is so weird and so when I looked it up they kind of explained that that this type of painting the dollar paintings are done in these colors so that really spoke to me even before I looked it up so I was glad that I did I'm going to pan back just a little bit and let you see this entire diamond painting over here we have the legend of course and these correspond to the numbers of the little diamonds that you put on the actual canvas. It's not difficult to do and it's a lot of fun. It's a wonderful craft and has really become very popular. So I thought I would introduce you to it. Now, just quickly, I wanted to show you these luminescent drills and here they are right here. These are white drills on this particular canvas and on top you can see, and I'll get right down on this, you can see that there are different colors on the top and when I move this back and forth you can kind of see them sparkle. See that? Isn't that crazy? And they're really beautiful. Now this artist has used them here and a little bit here and some here and some here and just in the tiny lines of the veins of the leaves and so that really gives it a kick. I love this painting. This is really more interesting than you would think it would be <laughs> from Hirschner's. It's not really a diamond painting company but they bought this particular painting and I can see why. Now this is not a full drill. This is just a canvas up here. This is in a very 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 pale pink right here and of course the painting is this wide from here to here and the lines are drawn clearly around it so you know uh, where to frame it if you want to frame it but between the leaves and all between the the poppies is just canvas there's no drilling doing going on here now some paintings you'll see are called a full drill and that means that every square inch is covered with these diamond drills and it's just like in cross stitching, when you have a full cross stitch piece, every single square is a cross stitch with thread. So I just wanted to show you that. I just think this is so beautiful. Again, the name is Poppies, and I'm going to put a link down into the d description box. I'm not sponsored by Hirschner's or Leisure Arts or anyone, Diamond Dots, that's who made the drills. Uh, but I just wanted to show this to you. I just thought it was so beautiful. I'm going to step back. See if I can get a better shot. There it is. Standing up, I can, I can see it a little bit better. So hope you enjoyed that trip to my little workstation. Okay, I'm back and I'm thinking that I've got a couple of announcements to make. Next week, I will probably not be around. I'm thinking um, I'm going to be traveling some off and on. I'll be at the house some and I'll be gone. And I may take the week off from doing videos 
and do some planning work, uh, do some finishing work, write a little bit on my patterns, you know, do some things like that. And so I may not be around next week and I may, it just depends on um, what my workload is. And I just want to be sure that if I don't show up on Monday or Thursday, y'all don't think I'm sick or something. <laughs> telling you ahead of time that I may not be here next week. So that's one announcement. The second announcement is about the crochet calendar. Love, love this crochet calendar. And there are several of us doing the work in here, the different patterns and uh, cinnamon stitches, Pam's adoring crochet, um, and others that I can't remember right offhand. But we are working on this month to month. Now this month is a project that I chose not to do. This is the bumblebees and they're really cute i've seen a couple of videos with those on them and they're very very cute but i simply don't have time to make those and i i thought about what pam's adoring crochet pamela did she did a very nice job with hers and made them looks like they they might be a little bit bigger than the pattern but maybe they're the right size but she just threw them all in a basket made a bunch and threw them in a basket well if i gave those to my grandsons they immediately become uh, throwing objects in the house and I just didn't want my daughter to have to be picking them up all the time so I decided I'm not going to do the uh, bumblebees that is a very cute little bee mobile it's very nice I love it if I had a baby or a grandbaby that I could make that for I would do it but I'm not I'm going to skip this month because I am just covered up and this is April now May is uh, more my speed I like to make that motif and see what it looks like. I probably won't be making the blanket because I have another blanket in progress if you know uh, the one I'm talking about, the Persian tiles. Another thing about that in a second. But this I will probably be working on. And I did buy some 24-7 cotton yarn in these colors. So I'll be using those to make at least the motif, if not several, or I don't know what I'll do with it, but I will make at least one. So I wanted to tell you that I am participating in this, but not every single month because I just have so much going on. I can't do that. Uh, I don't know if you all know this, but I have another business as well. And I work from home on that. And I, uh, everything that has to do with it is on my desk too. And so I am usually pretty covered up during the week and I want to make sure I have time for everything. So I'll be planning next week, but this is part of what I'm not going to be able to do this month. And I just wanted to let y'all know that in case you were looking for the calendar count. Y'all will remember my Mary Maxim Persian Tiles Afghan, and I am making that. It's in my beautiful new bag from Joe at Joe for Totes. Uh, she has a Facebook site now, and I will try to remember to put that down in the description box so you can find her. Um, she has made some gorgeous bags in the past, and I haven't heard from her in a little bit, so maybe she'll come up with a video to show us some new bags pretty soon. Um, I just wanted to tell you that the Persian Tiles Afghan was on sale all week, all weekend, excuse me, and it was, it went off sale last night on Sunday, and that date would have been the 11th, uh, April 11th was last night, and I was so distraught because I was going to talk about it on my video today to go rush out there and get one of those afghans for yourself. It's 20% off on Mary Maxim, and they do have the color that I'm working on in stock according to one of my subscribers, so I'm going with what she said. She ordered one, and it's coming, so I know that's so exciting. I I waited a long time for mine. It was back ordered, and then when it finally got here, it was so gorgeous. Um, and then they were out of stock for a long, long time again. So hopefully they'll keep those in stock. Now, if you're dying to make a uh, Persian Tiles Afghan, you can go buy the pattern on Janie Crow's website, and it's JanieCrow.com, J-A-N-I-E-C-R-O-W. Dot com and she sells the pattern there. You can buy the pattern on her website and then you can go uh, I think it actually in the pattern or on her website even might have a list of the yarns that you need and you can go and buy those from Mary Maxim if you want or Lovecrafts or anywhere else that carries that I think it's Stylecraft uh, yarn that that Mary Maxim sent me but I don't think you'd have to use that particular brand. Now, whatever Janie Crow uh, tells you to buy, that's what I would buy if I was doing one on my own. It's easier for me to buy a kit, but you know, if you really want to make one, you might be able to save a little bit of money that way. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I don't know how much that Afghan kit is. I didn't go out and look at it. Uh, I think mine was $80 minus a discount and minus another discount. I had another discount too. 
So it wasn't extremely expensive, but the second one I bought was more expensive. So that was the one I gave away for my 10,000 subscriber milestone. And uh, I heard from the nice lady that won that giveaway. She said that it arrived. So I'm excited. I'm glad somebody else has one and they can work on that as they like to. So that's my announcement about the Afghan throw. Now, I have a progress report on my sunlit tea. I just received the yarn to finish it. I had stopped working on it because uh, I did, ran out of yarn. I didn't have any more yarn to, to um, crochet with. So I put it away in my project bag and the yarn came this weekend. So I'm excited. I'll be starting to work again on that. But I do want to finish my date night tea first and then I'll work on my sunlit tea and that will come out as well in the next uh, little while. I can't promise the dates on my patterns anymore. It's just too hard to make sure that I get all the uh, details worked out in the pattern. I don't want to send something out that has mistakes in it. I can't stand that when I get a pattern that has obvious mistakes and a good uh, read through or work through would have fixed it. Um, and so I don't want my patterns to be like that. I want them to be as exact as possible. Now, I'm not saying I won't make a mistake, but, you know, uh, the fewer mistakes, the better for those who buy my patterns and go in and support my Etsy shop. And I so appreciate every one of you that do that. So those are my announcements for now. Now, let's do some giveaways. Well, I said let's do some giveaways. There's only one giveaway this week, and that giveaway is for the Coffee Break pattern and for the cobblestone yarn to make it from. And this is the cobblestone yarn that I'm giving away. It is the rose, Misty Rose color. Um, let me make sure that's right. Misty Rose color. And that's the color that I made my Coffee Break sweater from. This is the body color. This is the contrast color. It's the licorice color in cobblestone yarn right there. And you'll get three <laughs> it's upside down. You'll get three cakes of cobblestone yarn and the pattern which is here right there. You'll get that pattern already printed up and ready to go. And then I'm also sending out one of these cute little bags. I have several people say they like it. It's no problema. <laughs> it's a big it's a big project bag. It'll hold your coffee break sweater. So I'm gonna put that in the box as well to our giveaway winner today. So let's turn the camera to the computer and find out who wins the Coffee Break sweater pattern and yarn. Here we are at our computer. This is the URL from last Monday's video and that's where we put our comments in that had the word coffee in the comments. So let's find out how many comments we had for this particular giveaway that had the word, com it had the word coffee in the comment. Oh my, 492 people. Okay, thank you so much. <laughs> thank you for participating. All right, so let's start and find out who wins the Coffee Break pattern and yarn. That would be Diane Johnstone. Diane Johnstone. And there is her word coffee in her comment. So, Diane, you have won the Coffee Break giveaway. Thank you so much for participating, everyone. Diane, congratulations. I'm so glad to get this out of my office, but I'm excited about your winning the giveaway. So the bag and the yarn and the pattern will all be on its way to you as soon as you send me your mailing address. So be sure to do that. You can send it to me on my email address, which is down below in the description box. So again, congratulations, Diane, for winning this giveaway. Now for next week, and the giveaway instructions down in the description box, I have to disclose when I'm going to pick a winner. And I forgot last week to put that down there. But this week I'm going to remember and I'll put down there on my next video. So uh, I'm going to do a video on Thursday and I'm thinking that I'll go ahead and give this away on Thursday since I may not be here next week. So go ahead and Enter a comment for this and I will select the winner on Thursday uh, and also select the winner for the basic stitch yarn uh, quite a few uh, skeins of yarn that I'm giving away. So if you want to sign up for that, go to last Thursday's video and then for this, you'll sign up for the giveaway here on this video. So I will have two different winners on Thursday now and I'll pull the comments from this video for next Thursday for this coming Thursday. <laughs> Sorry, I'm trying to be clear here. 
This is some Beaucle yarn that I bought from Ice Yarns. There are eight skeins of yarn here. I'm not gonna take them out of the bag, but they're a cream color, very beautiful. They look like they're probably a size two or three. So if you wanna look at that again, this is a Beaucle yarn in the cream color eight skeins of it. I don't know how many yards are on here. Ice never gave very much information about theirs, and if it's on here, I don't know where it is, but um, there's quite a bit of yarn there. Plenty enough to make a really nice summer top or even one with sleeves in it. I think you'd probably have enough for that. So this will go out on Thursday to the winner of um, this particular giveaway, and if you'll sign up on this video and leave a comment and leave the word and, and have the word ICE in it, I-C-E. Just use the word ICE in your comment and you'll be in the running on Thursday to be picked for this. And then on Thursday, of course, we're going to pick the winner of the basic stitch as well. And all my giveaways will be all wrapped up. And then next week when I'm off, I won't have to worry about doing giveaways for next week. So if you uh, would like to sign up for these, be sure to put a comment in the comment box. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for watching. Thank you all for sharing my videos. I think that helps so much. People to understand that we have a crochet channel where we talk about crochet. I don't do tutorials. I talk about patterns. I talk about structure. I talk about yarns. I talk about subscription boxes. I do reviews. Not all that often, but uh, maybe I should do some more reviews because I know you all really liked my uh, hook reviews. I did uh, furl hooks and clover hooks and all that, and I did a comparison of those. And I've gotten more comments and more views on that particular um, uh, video than I have any of my others. And uh, it's been fun to watch it. I mean, I never promoted it ever on my show. So I may put that up in the corner on this one. That's what I may do. I'll put that up in the corner so you can see the, uh, the video that I've had the most views on in my entire year and a half that I've been on YouTube, and it's kind of fun to watch that. But anyway, that's the uh, focus of my channel. The focus of my channel is to talk about crochet, and I've thrown in a little bit about uh, diamond painting lately. I've done cross stitch. We've talked about knitting. I've never done it. <laughs> I've talked about learning it, but I've never learned it. Um, it takes more time than I have right now, but uh, the diamond painting is not something you have to spend months and months trying to create. Uh, uh, honing your skills for knitting and crocheting, it's actually something that you can do right away. Just want to let you know that things are moving along here. I appreciate you staying with me. I love every one of my subscribers. You're the best subscribers in the world, the kindest and most beautiful women that I've ever come across. You say the most gorgeous things, and I think you're really sincere. You seem to be very sincere about what you say to me, and I know you appreciate the time it takes to put videos out, and I appreciate the time it takes to watch my videos, so I try to do my very, very best. So let's leave it there, and on Thursday I'll be back, and we will check to see what's on the hook. <laughs>